I got a new toy guys, it's called the Guru 360 and check this out. Can move all the way around and it stays dead still. I thought you guys would find this interesting because there are actually some benefits to shooting on a gimbal that you can't get with six axis stabilization. So say for example, in this scenario here, we have the sun behind us and my Theta V needs to be turned towards the sun. So the seam line is facing the sun and we have very minimal lens flare. So if I wanna keep it like that, I'm gonna press the record button. Look at this. I can walk around and the seam line is going to stay dead on to the sun. So it means you can walk around in any direction and your camera will stay the same way. So you can set your camera up in advance to be in the best configuration possible. So you can avoid lens flares and seam line issues. I mean, look, it's not ideal having a gimbal in your shot. I can totally admit that. And I always do try to avoid using one if you can. However, there is a time and a place when a steady shot is more important than hiding a tripod or a gimbal. Something that this has actually over six axis stabilization, like with the one and the Xiaomi, is that there's a mode, if you double click this main button here, and now I turn, see how it's turning with me? So this is essentially the same as follow mode with the Garmin Verb. This is one of the best things of the, about the Garmin Verb, is follow modes. You can have a stabilized shot, yet it still keeps you in the center of frame. With the one and the Xiaomi, unfortunately you go from one side of the, the equirectangular video to the other. So this allows you to stay in the dead center, because it'll then pan with you. So you can choose to have it pan with you, or, you can choose to keep it in the same direction. It's totally up to you, but it'll, it essentially gives you more control over your stabilization. So I was curious to see whether the Guru 360 really did make that much of a difference with four different 360 cameras, the Theta V, the Garmin Verb, the Xiaomi and the Insta 361. So Michael from 360 Rumors and I put them side by side, one on a gimbal, one not, to see if there really was a difference. First, let's start with a camera with average stabilization ability, and that's the Theta V. On the left, you can see I'm holding it at the end of a selfie stick, and it's shaking quite a bit. On the right, Michael has the Guru 360 in action, and that is really smooth and is not going to leave your audience dizzy or vomiting, which is always a good thing. Next, when we use the Insta 361, it's a lot closer. This is a camera that has natural built-in six-axis stabilization, so neither one is really that jarring. However, when you pay close attention, you'll see a significant amount of jittering on the left where I have it on a selfie stick, whereas the gimbal is silky smooth again. This is something that six axis stabilization still doesn't do perfectly. It's doing a damn good job considering I'm flailing the camera about wildly, but it's still got a significant amount of jitter. When we go to a next level up camera like the Garmin Verb, we've got one in each of our hands. The competition is basically even. To me, they're looking more or less the same. You probably could argue that there's a difference here and there, but essentially, if you're going to spend more money, like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars that's when you're gonna get perfect six axis stabilization. With this camera, I don't really see the need to use a gimbal. And depending on how the GoPro Fusion pans out, it could potentially potentially be as good. However, it has been quite buggy from a lot of the stuff I've seen so far, so definitely stay tuned for more stabilization tests of the Fusion. So if you're thinking about working with a gimbal, you need to ask yourself three questions. One, what is my budget? Can I afford this and does it fall within my price range? Sometimes it might just be better getting a more expensive camera that has perfect stabilization. However, all cameras have strengths and weaknesses and these more expensive cameras can have a whole new round of flaws that you didn't think of. Two, how important are handheld and moving shots to you? Is your style of shooting on the go? Do you like sports, documentary, moving around a lot? If so, this is definitely something worth considering because it's going to mean your audience have a much smoother ride. Three, how important is it to hide the gimbal? Because the gimbal is a piece of camera equipment, it will be visible in your videos. There are methods to minimizing its presence and making it look way smaller than what you're seeing now. However, it's something that probably always will be there. So you need to ask yourself, is it more important to hide the gimbal or to have perfect stabilization? For me personally, I'd say it depends. When I look back on one of my earlier videos, three tips for 360 beginners where I'm a nervous stuttering wreck, I was using the Insta360 Nano with no stabilization and I would have killed for a gimbal in this situation. Look, six axis stabilization would have been excellent too. Anything would have been better than what I'm looking at now, 
but I would definitely use a gimbal in this situation where the objective was to explain concepts to people and not necessarily cover up how I'm actually doing it. I'll put a link to the Guru360 down in the description. Definitely check it out. If you are looking for a gimbal, can totally recommend it. Mine's been awesome so far, really user friendly, and I'm a complete idiot and I, even I know how to use it, so that's saying something. So definitely check out the Guru360. Also, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube by youtube.com slash life in 360 photo. I'm on Instagram, instagram.com slash Ben Claremont, and Facebook as well, facebook.com slash life in 360 photo. If you have any questions, leave them in the box below. I'll do my best to answer them. And the Guru Gimbal, the Theta V and I, will see you in the next video.